All right, so we ended our cold smoke video with Tita Cannon telling us to come to Georgia to film some videos with her. So guess what? We are here in the sticks of Georgia, ready to film with Tina Cannon. Let's go wake her up. Who in the world is here at seven o'clock in the morning? Good morning. You must have drove all night. I drove all night. You said to come visit and film some videos, so here I am. And you even made me coffee? Yeah. That's awesome, thank you. <laughs> Can I come on in? All right, let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of the Fogo Life. I'm Captain Ron. And I'm Tina Cannon. And we are here today filming steak, steak videos. videos. All right, Tina. So like we just said, we're filming steak videos, but let me explain to you why, all right? What we have here is we have two bone-in ribeyes but we're doing a boneless versus bone-in comparison video. Why do we do this? Because I made one of these already, and I used two steaks. One was a lot thicker than the other. One started with no bone, and I got hammered. These people out there hammered me on comments. That. You did see yes. that. Yeah, I think a lot of people saw that. <laughs> um, so we wanted to redo this whole entire test, all right? So the obvious, only obvious thing to do is to use two steaks with? Yep, with bone-in. With bone-in, exactly. So what my plan is here today, we're gonna to take these two identical ribeyes, they're from Demcoda Ranch Beef, they were cut off the same piece. Now Tina, for me, I personally do not think that there's gonna be a difference at all. I don't think it, that the bone-in, that you know, the, the traditional way of thinking is that bone-in right. gives more flavor, is more tender, it cooks yeah. more evenly. Personally, I don't think it is. What do you think? Well. I was taught in culinary school many moons ago okay. that bone-in was better. Okay. But I do know that when you have the bone-in, the carryover cooking, which is where it continues to cook once okay. you take it off the grill, is more. So I tend to remove things with bone-in a little bit sooner than I would meat with the no, no bones in it. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. But we just wanna stress here, we have two identical. They're the same thickness, they're the same, they're cut from the same, they're all identical. They're as identical as two ribeyes can possibly be. We're gonna cut the bone out, we're gonna fire up the big green egg, and we're gonna cook them side by side, and we're gonna finally find out once and for all. The truth. The truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> Tina, stop smacking the meat. I think the first thing we need to do, which is what we didn't do in the first one, is to cut one of the bones out of here. So. Well, I'm gonna use a boning knife. Okay, Makes And I'm sense. gonna use the weight of the meat to remove the bone. Okay. You see she how it just goes right along the edge and then I can take the whole bone out she as just, I follow it. You can see there's almost no meat left on this bone whatsoever, which is a really nice job. You're like a surgeon with that boning knife, I, I tell you. And I'm gonna roast this for Cody. Ooh, nice. Even the dog gets to eat good around here. Mm -hmm. Dang. We're ready for seasoning? Yes, let's right. season them up. I'd like to do the same thing with these as I do like my pork ribs. I like to season it, let it sit while my grill heats up. Yep. So, you know, one of the big things that we like to do is why we season the steak beforehand right. is that as we put the seasoning on, as it sits while we're heating up the grill, 15, 20 minutes, even a half hour, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take the seasoning, all the juices are gonna come up out of that steak and grab a hold of that seasoning, make it almost like a paste really on top. And then it's gonna, as it sits, it's gonna take all that seasoning and pull it down in the center of the steak. So you're really flavoring the center of the steak as well as the outside. That's the key to the salt. That is. So this is a very coarse smoked salt in yep. here. So you let it sweat, yep. and that creates something, if you want to be technical, called osmosis. Google it. Anyway, what it does, okay. as the salt melts, it allows all of those seasonings to soak into the meat. I want to do this side. You got to do one side. I want to do one side, too. Okay. It's not every day you get to use Tina's new rub here, you know? Yeah. So I like to give a nice, decent coating here. All right. Like that. Doesn't that smell good? It does smell really good. I, I'm, I'm actually very impressed, because you know what? I've seen a lot of SPG rubs. Let's face it, there's a lot of SPG rubs out there, but smoked yeah. SPG rub, whole nother level. Really cool, it's, and when you do this, it, it just tastes awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. really good, I, I love it, I, I do, I really do. So, I think there's only one thing have to do. Let's go light the grill, shall we? To, to the, the egg! egg! All right, now we're out here by the Mini Max. Tina just went inside to get the steaks. So I've got it loaded up with our Fogo Black Bag Premium Charcoal, and I've already thrown some Fogo starters in there. Okay, I'm not gonna use the Blazer Ball, because what I did is I placed some starters around so that we're lighting the whole thing, because we wanna cook these indirect, but then we're gonna finish them off with a really hot sear. So we're gonna take the convector out and everything. So let's go ahead and light this up, and we'll get started on our steak comparison video. I'm so excited. So we've got our convector that's gonna go right in here, deflector, however you wanna call it. 
We're gonna go our grate right on there. And our two steaks are gonna fit right over here, right? All right, Miss Tina, I think it's time to put them on. We're at 250 degrees cooking temperature. Bone in, going on first. And look at the crust that's gonna form with that rub on it. That rub is beautiful. All right, so notice that she's gonna put it on here. She's putting it with the bone to the outside. Okay, not to the inside because that's where all the heat is gonna be. So we're gonna kind of bunch these up. You wanna make sure your steak is over the convector. We don't want any of that direct heat coming up and hitting these steaks. So we're gonna reverse sear them. So we're gonna first slow cook them at 250 to let it get to about 120 degrees internal temperature. Then we're gonna pull them off. We're gonna pull that convector out and sear the living heck out of these things. What do you think? <gasps> don't forget Cody. Gotta roast a bone for the dog, baby. These steaks are gonna be so good, it's gonna give a dog a bone. <laughs> All right, Miss Tina, let's check these temperatures, shall we? All right, now I'm gonna check these not next to the bone. Nice. 123. Yeah, perfect though. 123.2, oh okay, my God. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna call that even at 123, all right? Should I just pull it's them off? Insta Raids is where it's at where it's at. That's where it's at. Look at that. Is that beautiful or what? Look at that crust. Yes. Now what we're doing is we're putting them on this rack here in the pan on a rack. The reason being is if we just laid them right down on the board itself, whoo, that's hot. If we just laid it right down on the board itself, they're going to kind of continue to cook and the bottom's going to steam. We don't want that. And we can't forget about little Mr. Cody's little special treat here, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get the grate off. Okay. And get the deflector off. Perfect, look at you. There we go. Good, now we're gonna let this really heat up. Okay, we're gonna give it about 10 minutes to really get going. Not only that, what we're gonna do is in a reverse sear, and then when you cook a steak, you wanna let your steak rest. Well, guess what? While this is heating up, it's, it's doing right. its rest. So, as soon as we sear them, we'll be able to take them off, cut them open, and see which is better, boneless or bone-in. Bone-in. Boneless. Bone-in. Boneless. Bone-in. All right, now to get this thing really hot, we wanna open up this bottom vent all the way, let as much air in as possible so that it's really flowing. You can see it's already heating up. It's getting nice and orangey glowy, baby. Orangey lovely. All right, guys, this thing is ripping hot. So should we get to some searing? Yes. I sincerely think it's gonna be good. Anyway, so we're gonna sear them exactly at the same time so we don't have anybody writing and saying, oh, we didn't sear them the same amount. That one's seared yeah. for seven seconds yeah. longer. Right, let's do it exactly the same time. Ready, one, set, two, go. three. Well, this one went on like a half a second sooner. Oh no. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let these go for about a minute to a minute and a half per side, flip it over, do the other side, take it off, slice it, and then we're gonna do the blind taste test. Woo, it's exciting. We even have some special guests, don't we, Tina? That's right, my mama's here and my husband. That beautiful crust. Look at that gorgeous bubbling action. Oh yeah, baby. Notice the caramelization here, the, the browning on the meat, the crust. That's called the Maillard reaction. We're naturally caramelizing the sugars and enzymes in the meat itself. I noticed that the one with the bone, this side of the bone, this did say fatter over here. So the rest of them kind of cooked down a little bit. Just to make sure we're doing this right, three tong calibration clicks and they are done. Look at that steak. Is that gorgeous or what? Right to the board. How about that? Before I cut them, here's our plan. I'm gonna cut these open, then I'm gonna go sit over the table with Tina and myself, her mom and her husband. Our cameraman is gonna put the steaks on two different plates. None of us are gonna know which is which. We're gonna try and find out which one is more tender, which one tastes better, because we wanna answer that question like we said, once and for all. Once and for all. Let's cut in and see what we've got. Wow, is that tender. Ooh wee, beautiful pink coast to coast, baby. Look at that. All right, guys, here comes the steaks. Let's see what we've got here. All right, now none of us know, but I'm curious to see why they look fantastic, okay? They, they look exactly the same. Um, so this is Tina's mom. You wanna introduce yourself, say hi, hi to the world? Hey, Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Hi. I'm Bobby. Bobby, all right. And you know, Tina and myself. Now, I'm, I'm curious to know, what do you guys all think? What is, what's gonna be the better one, bone-in or boneless? Boneless. You like a boneless steak. You prefer yeah. a boneless steak, mm -hmm. okay? I'm a bone-in bone steak. You like a bone-in steak kind of guy. All right. 
Well, I think there's only one thing left to do is get rid of this fly and let's all just kind of grab in, take a bite and see what we think, all right? Looks oh good. Oh my God, that is so tender. This is why we learned to cook because you can't get that in a restaurant, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So yeah, I have to say that was very good. Yeah. Tender, the rub is fantastic, by the way. The seasoning is fantastic. Thank you. Um, tender, tasty, right? it hit all the marks for me. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd say that's a nine out of 10 for me. I don't know, what do you guys all think? It'd be hard not to give that a 10 to yeah. me. Yeah. Perfect. That's yeah. good. It's tender. tender. Sure. Shall we move to the red plate? Red yep. plate. All right, move the blue plate aside. On the red plate here, everybody go ahead and grab one. Thank you, Ron. This is good. Cheers. Okay. All right, red plate steak. They are different. They mm -hmm. are a little different. But, is that Ron? They're good. <laughs> They're both good. So. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. They are both good. I have to go with you guys. I think. I think the blue one was better. I, I didn't think there was gonna be a discernible difference. But I have to agree. I think that the blue plate is the better steak. I too. Yeah, so all four of us agree. Mm -hmm. The flavor's yes. the same. I mean, but it's just, I think that's just yeah. more tender. There's a touch more tender. I don't know, I, I found that to even have a little bit more flavor, like natural flavor, not from the seasoning, but for the natural flavor of the steak, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. kind of shines through a little more on that one. All right, cameraman, let us know which one was which. So the boneless is the red one. The bone in is a blue one. Wow. Oh, wow. Tina wins. Man, oh, man. Bobby, all right. I, I didn't think. Nailed I, it. I did not think there would be that much of a difference. I, I got to tell you. So I wouldn't say one was extraordinarily better than the other, but it, that was yeah. definitely, to me, that was a better steak. And I do see a little bit of difference here. Like I think I talked about when you do carryover cooking. Yeah. They rest it. Everything was exactly the same. But if you notice, this one is a little closer to medium. Touch. And yeah. that, in my opinion, Jeff's opinion, is because the bone carries over more heat. Yeah. So. You know, that would make sense too because we had the bone on the outside more to, mm -hmm. to where the, the heat was right. coming up too as well. So I think that's a key difference. So if you're cooking a steak that's bone in, yeah. you might want to back off and pull it, you know, a couple yeah. degrees sooner right. than you would when it's not. So instead of like the 120 or 123 like we pulled these at, maybe like mm -hmm. 118, 115 might be better to pull that at. And this is the first time that you've tried my smoked SPG. Yeah. So what did you think? It's not gonna be my last time trying it, <laughs> I can tell you that for sure. No, very good, but what'd you guys think? Did you get kind of surprised by the results or? I, I you always knew? order a bone in, you so knew? I'm not. Yep. But I mean, I was, you know, they were close, so yep. I was a little nervous that, you know, so, well, little Miss, too. I always order a boneless steak. What do you think? I will order bone in. Bone in. That's a, I, I, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm with you. I'm, I did not think there was going to be a big difference. Actually, in the first video we did, this kind of proves y'all were right. Okay, we had to use identical steaks and cook them identically. But yeah. there, there is a slight difference. I'm not saying if you served it to me a half hour apart that I might not know the difference. But um, tasting them one right after the other like that, that's definitely a better steak. Yeah. yeah. All right. There you have it, folks. The final question, all answered once for all, is bone-in better or is boneless better? A bone-in steak is the way to go. And thank you to Demcota Ranch Beef for a beautiful steak. I wanna thank Tina and family for being out here with us filming this great video. Remember, get out and grill, and we'll see you next time on The Fogo Life. Captain Ron. And Tina. Out. <laughs>